we're gonna take this and change it into this. So if we're gonna replicate, I'm gonna pull measurements off this. Like a nine inch on the top and we'll do a 14 inch diameter on the bottom. First thing you gotta do, we're gonna offset our bottom edge up two inches. I'm just gonna make, measure over 14 inches. That's the, that's the size of the base of the flashing that we're doing. Do a halfway point, which would be, Scott? Seven inches. You got her, seven inches. Right there, and just a quick tip here, guys. The where you're doing, where you're doing the layout on your sheet, make sure you leave some room off to the right hand side here. So I'm gonna lay in a, a, a 612 pitch roof pitch right now. So I'm gonna measure over 12 inches. Keep it. I'm gonna measure the side height. Oh, this one's seven inches. I'm gonna increase that to nine. Put a nine up there. Okay. For an eight inch pipe that's coming through the roof, we do a nine inch opening, giving us half inch clearance all the way around the top edge of the fitting. So we go for a nine inch on center, we go four and a half, four and a half. That's my cone. Right there. So now I just gotta complete my cone here. Draw that through. that through there we go okay and the next thing we do is we're going to draw in a bottom arc here from one side to the other that arc represents half of this opening here now what we got to do we got to split this arc up into equal parts okay so i'm going to keep this the size of uh, the the radius measurement here i'm going to keep this in my dividers, lock it tight so it doesn't move. And we're gonna start intersecting through the arcs from this point over here, from this point up here. We'll transfer that to the other side because it's gonna be the same thing. And then from this point here. Next step in the process, we're gonna transfer that line down to the base of the cone, like that. Yeah, that right. the same yeah. In the process, we're gonna take where these lines intersect on the base of the cone and transfer that up to the apex of the cone. Next step in the process is where these lines intersect the roof pitch we have to transfer, we have to square them off to the outside edge of the, the cone. But before we do that, I'm gonna go ahead and I'm gonna mark, I'm gonna number my lines. So one, two, actually let's, let's put some, let's put some points in here to really drive home where we're talking about here. Here, here, here. So now I'm gonna number them. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven. Okay, now that they're all numbered, let's square them off to the other side. Now, and guys, don't, don't bother doing this with marker. Make sure you, um, 
you're using some fine point marking, like maybe a scratch all or a nice sharp pencil, it's just going to increase your accuracy. Okay, so we're just transferring these over. There's six and seven's the last one. So just to stay organized, we can do one, two, three, four, five, six, and then seven's on the bottom. Next step we gotta do, so we have to scribe our arc in and put a hole up here, signifying the apex. in there okay, and it just spins along that swing point that, that pivot point up there um, I have my top and then seven is my my bottom drop it in and make my lines going up so right, let's go down to seven we'll do those other ones in a little in a little bit i'll do something first here okay so now what we're gonna do and just take this out for just a minute. So what we do now, I'm just gonna establish the starting point of my pattern. So I just make a mark anywhere on this arc here. And I'm just gonna draw a line straight to there so this is the starting point of my arc i want the seam to be on this side of my cone not the back like we talked about before so i'm just going to mark seam right here seam is seven okay and that'll that'll come into fruition later but for right now we're going to get our pattern length and what that is is our di diameter times pi which ends up being 43.96 circumference equals so circumference equals pi d circumference equals 3.14 times 14 which gives us 43.96 which is 43 and 15 sixteenths and what I'm going to do, how I'm going to measure that is I'm going to take a ruler from my starting point of my pattern and measure 43 and 15 sixteenths. Okay, curve it and then I hold my, I hold my ruler close. I'll get a line. 43 and 15 16 so I'm just going to double check it just to ensure we have what we need yeah I think I like it I like it right there okay now that that's done I'm going to complete my pattern here I'm just going to draw a line right through there so we have a raw pattern right there without any allowances on it so what I'll do right away since I'm up here I'll put in my my uh, my groove seam allowance I'm gonna do a 3 8 groove seam we'll do two here one over there that's the allowance for a groove seam is seam width times three mark that in
Okay, so I got this raw pattern now. We're gonna segment this raw pattern into equal parts. I'll show you how to do that. Take our scribe here. I think it's gonna be a little bit bigger. Maybe like a marker width bigger. So I grabbed it off of there. I'm gonna just transfer it to here. Transfer this all the way along and see how we come out at the end. Okay, so we have about a one inch remaining here. So all I do is I just I just make it just a hair bigger. Uh, if you break this up into 12, because we have 12 segments, if I break this up into 12, you know, you're probably gonna be around the 16th mark. So we just went a little bit bigger than what we needed. I'm gonna make some taller lines. The lines off the bottom, enough. Okay, so there, the bottom there, the bottom there. Oh. I have now a segmented, an equally segmented pattern. I'm just going to draw on these lines. I'm going to line it up with my apex up there. And then I'm just going to draw a line through the pattern. Like so. Because we want the seam to end up on the face, on the seven, right? We basically want this pattern to close on the face. So if we were to open that up, your two ends would be this seven point. In the middle of the pattern, so halfway through the pattern, would be the one. So let's start by numbering the seven. So seven. Six, five, four, three, two, one. Counting back up. Two, three, four, five, six, and seven. You can see where the two sevens are going to come together on the face. That's how we specify where the seam is going to go. If, if I wanted the seam on the back, this would be one and seven would be in the middle. But that's not what we want. But yeah, when it, when it comes to layout, guys, this, this is the beauty of layout is we can, you know, make a fitting to our heart's desire. Whatever, whatever you need in, your, in the job, you can do it which is, uh, that's the freedom that the layout provides, that laying out provides. Okay. Yeah, you can, I mean, you can even lay this right on the job if you want. Okay, so one. I'm gonna go over to my one mark. Okay, there's the one. We go to two. So on both the two marks, I'm gonna mark that in. Two. Okay. Three. Three. Three, four, four, and four. Five. I'm just gonna double check that that's the five. You can always reference back to your to your uh, plan um, 
to your pattern view. So I'm gonna go with the five over here. Five, five, six, six there. Okay. Let's take this right out. Don't need it anymore. <clears throat> okay, so we've laid this pattern out. All these intersections, we're gonna connect with a, a ruler. Get a, a get a, a fl somewhat of a flexible ruler here. And you can see I'm just trying to line it up. So you, well, there's not much change in line. Now this is our final pattern. What I'm going to do is I'm just going to add uh, a, th a three eighths or a seven sixteenths um, allowance to the bottom. Okay, we're going to use the popcorn here and come up the 716 section. Come up the seven sixteenths, and then another seven sixteenths, and angle up and out again. And all this is garbage. That's it.